Welcome to Senior Stay or Go TV, a show to educate, entertain, and advocate on behalf of our aging adults. We are here to provide you the best information for your quality of life. Today we have two great guests with us. They are here from the Soresti Company based in Carlsbad. Correct. One mm -hmm. is Dirk Sunson, Dirk Sunson yeah. who's the CEO, and the other is Nicole McPherson, mm -hmm. who is one of their caregiver coaches. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us it's today. It's our pleasure really to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. coming in and joining us today. So tell us about Soresti. Well, so Soresti is really focused on the challenges that families have in the home when they're taking care of a loved one who may have Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. And so the, the sort of the essence of our program is that we really empower the family caregiver to provide better care um, for a loved one. Right? So if you sort of think about the challenges in the home, they're then exacerbated if an individual also has, let's say, heart failure or pulmonary disease or diabetes, because one of the things that happens when you have Alzheimer's disease is you lose the ability to self-manage, to take care of yourself, to sort of address the challenges of your chronic condition. And so one of the things that happens is if you can't take care of yourself, you know, you end up going to the emergency room, you end up going to the hospital, and, and that's not good for the patient, that's not good for the system. And so our program is really sort of founded in helping address the challenges of chronic conditions, the inability to self-manage. And of course, who's the, who's the best person to help with that? It's the, 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 typically a spouse or a baby boomer child who, who's providing care for a loved one. And, and we really, as, as we'll show you, we sort of have a technology-enabled program, a dementia care program that empowers that caregiver so that they kind of know what to do. And you know, in our healthcare system, people with dementia are largely forgotten. Everything that happens in healthcare is focused on people who can sort of self-manage. You know, I can give you an app, I can send you something to read, and none of that will work if somebody has a disease like dementia, a stroke, or a brain injury. And so that's really where we come in. So it could also be used for somebody with a traumatic brain injury. That's exactly right. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you broadly cast us as um, patients or people who are living with a disease that makes it impossible for them to take care of their own chronic conditions, we are started, we're starting with dementia. That's really, the, from a marketing perspective, the biggest number of people who have that. But it goes to stroke, it goes to traumatic brain injury, because the challenges there are, are in some cases, longer. Somebody can live with a, a traumatic brain injury for 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. and you know, the stress on the caregiver is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does, does your, when you're on the phone mm -hmm. as, a, as a caregiver coach, uh -huh. are you focusing mostly on the seven aids of daily living? Are you focusing on just the daily routine? How are you, how are you, I know it's probably specific to the client's needs, right, right. but how do you begin the process, I guess? Right, well we've uh, built a program and we provide them with education that's very relevant for their own caregiving situation. Um, it could be video based, it could be a reading, uh, we could be having a discussion. Uh, but everything is really personalized for that caregiver and that um, caregiving situation for them. Um, so we might be having a discussion on a video about UTIs. Uh, that's something very pre prevalent. Oh, yeah. um, and it causes and a lot of UTI. really UTI. trouble. UTI, yeah. UTI yeah. being? Yes, a urinary tract infection. Thank Excuse you. me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so yeah. that could have no been their well. topic for the day. Uh, they could have watched a video or read a synopsis, and I'll be there just to make sure that they understood what they watched, that they got some value from it, so they can then take that information and put it into practice. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to back up the truck a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. Mm -hmm. Let me, how does this work? I mean, okay, I'm concerned about mom, or my mom, right. my dad has been diagnosed with dementia. Mm -hmm. I call Soresti up, and what happens? Yeah, so, so this is really the question to sort of how the program works. So, um, you know, the, 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 the whole program sort of starts with us shipping you a tablet device, mm -hmm. right? And, and that tablet device is really just a way for you to get access to the program. So we send you sort of a, you know, an off-the-shelf tablet. Now, this has been optimized they're not playing um, cross. <laughs> well, th this is actually, these were my family pictures. Oh, oh, so, oh, okay. so the default mode are family pictures. So there's a smartphone app oh, that other so family cool. members yeah. can have, mm -hmm. and they Perfect. can send pictures and messages. So the default here is that it's just circling through. It's so they don't get scared. They actually see it, and it's something they exactly. recognize. Exactly. So, right. Right. so this tablet is intended to be always on. Mm -hmm. It is designed to be sort of senior friendly. So you can't go to Google. You can't watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's a cell connection, so you don't need Wi-Fi in your home. 
And uh -huh. it's really just a device that facilitates access to the program. The program is really about the interaction of the coach, mm -hmm. coaching a family caregiver in a sort of a very personalized way. So take the situation where um, you're caring for somebody maybe with moderate stage Alzheimer's disease, and maybe they have several challenges, like they're prone to urinary tract infections, or maybe they have a challenge with wandering. Well, as a family caregiver, you really don't want to know about all the different types of dementia and all the things that could happen. So say, these are my challenges today. I want to learn best practices for how do I deal with that. For so the personalization of the program is almost the essence of what Ceresti does. So under the hood of all of this beautiful coach and great <laughs> you know, tablet and so forth is a personalization engine that really tries to personalize our approach. We look at the, the, almost the patient, we look at what chronic conditions they have, we look at their caregiver, we look at their strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. and we essentially develop a program that plays to the strengths of the caregiver, that maybe minimizes things that they're going to be not so good at, and then the coaches sort of reinforce that. So every patient caregiver diet gets a different program. Right. And that's all facilitated through the technology and the tablet. It's just really the way in which they can access this. It's an always-on device, right? It reflects the sort of picture books when, when it's not doing anything. And then you basically have a daily care plan that sort of says, here's what we want you to do in terms of taking medications. Here's what we want you to do to, in terms of additional education. And then, you know, at Nicole's end, she kind of knows what's happening yeah. because we have a dashboard that sort of says, well, they watched that video. And then she can follow up, says, what did you think? Was there any questions? And we can really make sure that we're allowing that caregiver to gain the knowledge, skills, and confidence that will allow them to really what do what? Provide better care. And what does that do? That means you're making sure that urinary tract infections and falls visits. are minimized. Yes, and yes. then you're essentially keeping folks out of the emergency room on the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as a business, our customer is actually the insurance company. Right? So unlike sort of saying, well, you know, you as a consumer should just buy this, we're sort of saying, look, we can prove to a payer or an insurance company that we can reduce health care costs. Mm -hmm. And so our model really is that this is underwritten by the insurance company. It's offered as a benefit to somebody, let's say, who's on a Medicare Advantage plan. And then, you know, they run a program. We, we have different types of programs. We have a 12-week program that, you know, is, is fairly popular. So, you know, in 12 weeks, you sort of get a heavy dose of, of education, and a big part of the education is focused on how do you manage that changing relationship between mm -hmm. somebody who has dementia yeah. and a family member, because invariably that's, that's where things fall apart. That person that you've maybe lived with for 30, 40, 50 years, right. who now mm -hmm. can't remember your name, who maybe because of their disease is starting to show some behaviors, how do you make sure that doesn't become a an anger-filled situation, but something that's compassionate and full of understanding. And so we spend a lot of time in our program, and we bring a lot of really excellent education to a caregiver so that we almost give them a new pair of glasses, so that they look at the situation that today might be, I don't know what to do, to, you know, now I understand what's happening. And the, the goal is really to, to live through this disease with the entire family, with the highest quality of life possible. And just to have somebody to speak with Yes. is huge because you feel so alone sometimes mm -hmm. and you don't know where to turn yeah. and you could be on the internet for hours trying to find what you oh, need yeah, and, it's, and you're never going to find it trust yeah. me I've been there yeah. Yeah. so mm -hmm. could I let's say I've just been diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment mm -hmm. would I be able to manage that on my own initially or would you not suggest I do that so when it comes to mild cognitive impairment um, you know there's probably things available on the internet, you're still able to sort of access yourself. We're, we're really focused, um, and primarily because the business model is to save costs, mm -hmm. the cost for somebody who has chronic conditions and is sort of challenged by dementia or something are much, much higher. Right. So we wouldn't get somebody to underwrite this program if it was for MCI. Got it. Okay. Right? So this is really strictly focused at the moment on you know, Alzheimer's disease, and it will in the future focus on stroke and, and traumatic brain injury. So at least, let's say, three to four of your aids of daily living are not being, are, are being compromised in some way. Yes, okay. that's correct. That's okay. correct. And, and I think at some level, you, you probably have to be past sort of any denial about what's happening. So you sort of say, look, I'm, I'm faced with this. How do I deal with this incredible challenge? Mm -hmm. And it turns out that there are professional tools available that are used to train professionals in communities, right. for example, or in memory care facilities or in skilled nursing facilities, and those are not available to the home. So we've licensed a lot of that content, and then we have 
sort of curated it and made it available in digestible uh, chunks to somebody in the home. So mm -hmm. not that we want to complicate this, but we're kind of giving professional grade training to somebody in the home, something that they've never had access to before, something that's previously been reserved for people who are, you know, professionals who are providing this is level that, of is care. Is that your role, Nicole? I'm trying to... Right, right. So, so you're, you're, on, you're like manning the phones or, mm -hmm. or... Well, and I have a lot to do with the program as well, just again making sure that it is personalized for each uh, family and, and caregiver uh, because I really am there to form a relationship with them. So I am that person that they can press their contact, their coach button, and I'm going to call them right back. And if they're maybe experiencing something uh, that isn't on their tablet that day, I can send them some information, some resources, mm -hmm. um, a reading, a video. Um, we have a lot of different tools that, that I can provide them with, but I am there to talk through things with them. Uh, maybe they have some questions on uh, maybe a chronic condition like diabetes. And uh, while I don't get too in-depth with medical um, information, I do have a lot of experience in the field and can just share my, my experience with them, maybe some tips, maybe some strategies, and I'm there to coach them through the program. Uh, they don't just get the tablet and they're on their own. So it really does have that personal touch. Yes, it is on a remote basis, so I'm not in their home with them. Uh, but really, I think that's a, a really great positive because we're not limited by my geographic location. So a coach can be across the country right, right. and still have access to, to their caregivers all over the country um, and provide them with that support that they might not get in their home. What happens if you think there may be some drug interaction taking place? Do you, do you make contact with the physician or suggest the caregiver? make contact with the physicians? Yeah, so it's a, it's a really good question. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we have sort of a medical program, we have a program we call the PREVENT program, which is really intended to sort of help somebody, you know, stay in the home safely, and, and we prevent admissions to the emergency room and so forth. In that case, we're working collaboratively with the provider group. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and in some cases, we may even get out of the ER, out of the electronic medical record, we may get access to some elements of their care plan. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't just put that on the tablet, but we sort of say, well, what does that mean you should have be doing every day? And we may have a medication list on the tablet that's current. And maybe that caregiver can take that to the physician with them and say, here's a medication set, you know, my loved one, is ta loved one is taking. One of the things we do, for example, at the end of every day, through the technology, we ask the family caregiver to complete a daily assessment. So mm -hmm. think about it. We say, how was your day? How was your loved one's day? Even that gives us a lot of information and it'll mm -hmm. trigger a call from right. the call yeah. if there's some sort of a spike. Mm -hmm. And then we ask questions like, you know, was there a fall? Did you take a new medication? Did you go to the doctor? Is there a new behavior? Right? And it can be personalized for the challenges they face. And based on those answers to the daily assessment, we may alert a provider sort of saying, look, you know, this patient has reported a weight gain. Maybe they have mm -hmm. congestive heart failure. We think that's you know, an opportunity for you maybe to give them a call and make sure that, you know, they shouldn't come in for a visit. So on the healthcare side, we're not making medical decisions because if you were a doctor, you'd be like, who are these guys from Sarastia? <laughs> what do they know? So we really want to simply take, patient. exactly, we want to take their care plan. We want to kind of almost make that family caregiver an extension of the care team, mm -hmm. right? So That's if you think perfect. about Right. what's happening demographically with family caregivers and so forth, we're going to have a shortage. Of course, people can't afford necessarily to pay for some of these services, particularly if it's a long-term disease. So in some ways, we're kind of giving the caregiver training wheels so they can sustain themselves longer. And of course, then they get access, sometimes through our recommendations, to care. If somebody needs home care, or somebody looks for a recommendation to a community, they've asked us that, and we will in many cases make some suggestions and, and sort of say, here's what's available in your community. So I'm just going to try to wrap this up from a business model standpoint. That's what yeah. I'm trying to wrap myself around is like Patty and I uh, got to meet the Poway um, Daycare Center. Yes. Mm -hmm. And would that be a place where you would like to go and demonstrate to to the folks? And, and I mean, I know it's insurance, but is it self-pay possibly where you could then demonstrate to the people that are dropping off their loved ones at the Poway Daycare Center to say, hey, this is something that could help you stay in your home longer? So Ron, you bring up a great point about community um, resources. So one of the things we also do is we curate kind of local nonprofits that provide services, whether that's adult day healthcare, whether that's, you know, maybe a respite program that could be offered by any number of nonprofits. And then if that's appropriate for you, it'll just show up on your tablet. Now, the business model really is we'd like this to be underwritten by either 
you know, a Medicare right. Advantage plan right. Right. or by, you know, we think in the future hospitals may reimburse us when somebody's <coughs> discharged. But, you know, until everybody's sort of covered, we have a private pay option where people can come to us, they can access the program, they get the benefit mm -hmm. of a coach like Nicole. And, and that's done privately, and we probably won't go very medical in a program like that, mm -hmm. right? Because we, we may not have a relationship with that um, family or caregiver's providers. Got it. That's a what kind of feedback are you getting from the caregivers that you've worked with to date? Because, yeah. like I told you earlier, I mm -hmm. wish I knew you 12 years yeah. ago because it's a very long right. and right. very frustrating road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been able to work with many different families, uh, many different backgrounds, locations, uh, different diagnoses, and progression of dementia, whether that be in the earlier stage or the later. And we've really got some, some great feedback about the Ceresti program. Um, we've been able to help these families, you know, learn a lot and feel more empowered in their home. They don't feel so lost and confused. And they know that I'm there. They know that every day something helpful is going to appear on this tablet. And they can also have a conversation with me. A lot of times you wake up and go, oh my God, what is yeah. today going to bring? It's never yeah. the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, you're almost afraid. Yeah. You're right. almost afraid for the sun to rise. Right, yeah. right. And it is very scary for them at times. And we really want to try and minimize that. Because if you're scared, you can't be a great caregiver. Yeah. If you don't know what to do, you're not going to provide the best care, no, no matter how good your intention is. Um, and these unpaid family caregivers have an extremely hard job. Even the paid ones. Right, even paid, of course, <laughs> yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, but these caregivers yeah. that I work with, they don't have sometimes support coming into the home. And it's really on them. And, and I'm there just to support them through that. Well, we thank you both for being here today. Yeah, it's our and pleasure. Thank you. Nicole and Dirk. And we wish you the best of luck. Stick around for more Senior Stay or Go TV. Today we have Tiffany Yen with us, who is the Director of Sales and Marketing at Casa Aldea, which is a brand new, beautiful senior community yes. here in town. So yes. welcome and thank you so much thank for joining so, us. Thank you so much for having me. Tell us a little bit about where you're located, because it's not always easy to yes, find. Yes, I mean, I, you guys have been there, so you yes. know we have been there. it is kind of a new area. So we technically are Casa Aldea Senior Living at Santa Luz, which there's a beautiful Santa Luz golf club across the street off of Camino del Sur but not everybody knows about that either. So we really are in, it's still a newer area, but it's the Del Sur area, kind of on the outskirts of Forest Ranch, Fairbanks Ranch, Rancho Santa Fe. If you know Camino Del Sur and San Diego Road, we're kind of on the corner, not on the corner, but basically on the corner of that. Um, so north of Highway 56. I'm gonna give you, since, since Patty and I do real estate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nine we two drive a lot. East of 92130. Okay. Would just, be, just east. Okay. This is Carmel Valley. Uh -huh. North of the 56. Okay. So you're a, no, so that's. Okay, yeah, a, no, that, I so like that. Yeah. Most people know Carmel Valley. Yes, yes. But you're east, you're the east edge of Carmel Valley. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the west edge of the Del Sur, Santa Luz area. Yes, yes. And north of the 56. Yes. Which 56 runs east and west. Yes. Does that help everybody? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's, it's But a that's hard, what makes it, it so cool yeah. is if you, you have to drive by, you won't find it really. I mean, no. Even if you drive by, no. you think it's part of the surrounding yes, community. Yes. The well, architecture. Because it's so beautiful too. The architecture is fabulous. In. Oh my goodness. It's, and people it's right, walk in and right. they're like, this is senior living. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's part of the. It really, in it's in part of the community. It yes. doesn't stand out yes. like it's something that somebody yes. plopped in there. Yes, it, it really looks like a large. I mean, there's a lot of large homes in that area, right, beautiful right. homes, and it really looks like a, a much larger home. It's more about almost seventy five thousand square foot home, um, that just fits in that in that neighborhood. So it really it, it kind of blends in. So what's going to make your experience different than any other? So, I mean, you have been there, like we said. Just walking through the door, I think, is Amazing. Uh, an, an, a, an experience unlike any other. Um, it, people's jaws drop when they walk through, and I tell people, no matter if you think that it, a location might not be good, the area might not be perfect, maybe you, live, uh, you think you live a little too far away, you have to at least come by and see it because it truly is unlike anything you've ever seen. Um, basically, I compare it to some of the larger beautiful communities that we have in San Diego, like La Casa Glen, Carlsbad by the Sea, the V over in La Jolla, but they're very large. Um, so with us, our ownership, it's uh, privately owned, third, third um, generation 
um, multifamily housing. So this is their first assisted living and memory care, and they truly wanted to make it something special and something different that we didn't really have um, in San Diego. And that's why they created a smaller, mo more boutique assisted living and memory care community specifically for the people that want that beautiful community resort style experience, but they don't want acres and, and acres and acres and acres of land and having to walk you know, long distances to get to different areas. You truly can age in place in your apartment. You don't have to go from one building to another building as you mm -hmm. advance in your care needs or support services. Um, and we truly want to be an independent living community while supporting our residents. We don't want them to feel like they're getting care or, or that they're being taken care of. Um, we want them to feel like it's just what we do. We want to help. We love them. And they're not even going to realize that we're, that we're assisting them in other ways, but it's just our type of service and our type of customer service that we offer. Like being on vacation. Just, yes. Just having all the amenities yes. and not having to do any yes. of the work. Oh, I don't, yesterday I was giving a tour. <laughs> And I say this all the time, but I would love to be able to live there. I mean, if I if they have, we were talking about it with someone, if they had something like that for uh, our, our younger population, I would love that. Because you're basically like, you're on a resort, you're in a hotel, and everything gets done for you. You can still do what you want to do. But go where you want to go. Yeah, you can still go. You can go out. You can take trout. You know, you can go on trips. You can go down on your own to the, the to the coast, but we could also take you there. We could do group events. We're very social, as you guys know. Our communities are very social, um, and we really get involved with the community um, close to us. We do lots of fundraisers and you know those things that most of our type of communities do. Um, but our management company really takes it to the next level. So we're managed by Integral Senior Living, which is an amazing company I've worked for for uh, about five years. Everybody that works with them doesn't want to leave them. <laughs> and when things happen, that and they're says not, a lot. It, it really does, <laughs> especially because senior living, is, there, there is a large turnover typically. Um, but with ISL, um, they, truly, they truly focus on the staff and the residents. And I know everybody has heard this before in a way, but happy staff equal happy residents. So if our staff love where they work and they love to be there, then the residents are going to get that energy and they're going to love to be to live there and they're going to get the most that they can out of it because there's so much to get out of it. The positive mentality is the most important thing and if the staff and the residents can both have that positive mentality, I mean there's no limits to how much fun you can have. <laughs> oh true. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> So what would you recommend someone do if they're in the process of searching for? So many times I hear, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> it's not time. I'm looking, but you know, it's, it's, it's a long ways away because it's scary. This, this, this process is something that is very scary because it's a big change in and your, your typical. process. It doesn't yeah. happen overnight. Oh my goodness, no. And that's probably my tip would be to not, to make it to where it's not an overnight process. Sadly, we do get some people that they wait and wait and wait. And they say, no, 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 moment. and then something happens and then their family has to step in. They have to jump around and start looking at a few different communities and try to pick the best for them. And then they move in without really making it their own and it being, it being their own choice. Um, so I truly recommend finding out what you want ahead of time. See, look at the different communities. There's so many communities in San Diego there's a perfect fit for each person. We're not going to be, you know, not everybody's going to want La Costa Glen. Not everybody's going to want us. Not everybody's going to want um, Carlsbad by the sea and be on the coast, which is beautiful, but not everybody wants that. Right. So there are so many different communities. You need to find out what is going to fit for you. And in our community, staying in your home a little bit longer, not until you, you need a lot of care and you're, <laughs> you're waiting too long, but staying in your home and enjoying your home for a little bit longer and coming into our community when you're ready for all the services that we provide. I mean, we do everything for you. Dining, um, support as far as care and services. Um, we have 24-hour nursing staff on site ready to help wow. um, when we need it, so that's great. Um, housekeeping, laundry, 
everything. So you said boutique. So give yes. us an idea how many apartments you yeah, have. Yeah, so we, we have only a 64 apartments. Wow. So we do have, that as I boutique. said, it is very boutique. Not a lot of communities are that small. Um, a lot of newer properties, they're trying to go bigger. Um, usually you're seeing at least 150 apartments plus. And they're, they're that nice big structure, which is great, again, for some people where they have all the different levels in the, in the community. Uh, but we were very simple, but we're very high end and comfortable and homey, um, beautiful, beautiful. It, it does walk in like a very high end hotel. Yes, yes, but it's the, not too. No it's not stiff, right? right. No, it's, it's not. not you don't feel like you can't touch anything right, or that right. you can't make very, yourself at home. Very comfortable. Yes, the, our residents that are moving in, they people that have toured, they all say the same thing: is that it feels like their home. That's important. It's a nice home. And it feels comfortable and that's the most important thing and i think one other distinction that we should make is because you've been mentioning other communities uh -huh. those communities cost a lot of money yes. which they're great yes but they cost a lot of money yes. to enter to get in yes. you're not that way we are not no so what the larger communities the the ccrc's community uh, continuing care retirement communities um, mm -hmm. they have a large buy-in um, so you could be putting down 300,000. Yesterday I was talking to someone, they were looking somewhere and it was going to be close to a million wow. um, to just get in. And you have to be completely independent. So you kind of have to make that decision ahead of time and not wait too long to where you're barely <laughs> slipping in and <laughs> then having to go into their assisted living, which is a different experience. They really cater to that independent, truly, truly, fully independent person. Um, so to take advantage of that, you need to get in uh, a long time before you technically probably would consider yourself ready. Um, you're putting up front a lot of money. You're still paying a good monthly rent. Um, so it's, and people are able to do it and they love it and it's good for those people, but not everybody wants to do that. I was just giving a tour yesterday and the, the son that, you know, the, the mom is starstruck by the huge big community, um, but she was starstruck by our community too. Um, and he just said, I just don't get why people put a million dollars to live somewhere <laughs> and then you're stuck, you know? So with us, you, we have a small community fee, um, we have our monthly rent and it's a 30 day notice. So if they need to move, if things change, if they wanna relocate to another area where their family is, maybe they wanna go up to Northern California or mm -hmm. they need to go over the East Coast, it's not like you're stuck. In some of the bigger communities, it's a contract and it's a life contract and it's very hard to get out of and you, you usually would lose a lot of money too if you, if you needed to do that. So it's great, a great option. People love that. And the, <laughs> and the food is the food. Oh Tell us goodness. about your dining experience. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's probably my, one of my favorite things. So I get to brag that we have um, Chef Renee Coda um, who has been in the food dining um, industry for 30 years and 20 of those has been senior living, the high-end senior living communities in San Diego. And he truly, he's the best guy. <laughs> a lot of chefs are, are good at what they do and they know it and they're kind of cocky and sometimes rude, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> it happens. It happens. It's just, it's kind of a tip. I think it's a, I think they feel like they have to because that's kind of the standard. Like mm -hmm. I, I gotta be a little mean. <laughs> so Renee, he is amazing at what he does and he's, he truly has that servant's heart and he's very humble. He knows he's good at it, but he's truly humble. And uh, he, he, he got into this industry because um, he lost his, his grandparents at a very young age. And uh, when he got into the beginning of this, this um, industry, um, he realized that it really felt, filled that void of mm -hmm. not having his grandparents. So That's he sweet. truly treats all of our residents like, they're, like his grandparents and he'll do anything for them. Um, so our dining experience is, again, unlike any other, like, like our community is, um, we have 25 choices daily. All day, wow. dialing, all day dining, so all throughout the day, anytime they want to eat, they can come out and have a full, a full meal, whatever they, whatever they choose. We even have an after hours menu, so technically we have 24 hour um, meal service. Um, the venues, I mean, we have a beautiful dining room, I mean, gorgeous with the beams, and um, then we have our beautiful outside dining area, which we will love to enjoy in the beautiful San Diego days, right? Um, we have a private dining room if they want to do more intimate private parties. And then we also have our bar and bistro that's open daily as well. So if they didn't want to go into the dining room, they could just eat at the bistro, have something simple or, or have a full meal. Um, but there's so many, so many types of areas that we can allow our residents to enjoy their food. Because food, sadly, is kind
kind of a lot of our day. Well, <laughs> you wake up. Sounds right? like being on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> cruise ship and dry dock. Right? Is what we call yes, it. yes. And for those that are watching and viewing this, if you really, Tiffany would love to host you yes. for lunch. Yes. And that's what Patty and I tell most of our clients yes. who are considering the option of moving to a senior community. Yes. Try go the food. kick your tires. <laughs> Right, and yes. go check it out yes. and hang out for a while yes. to meet you, meet yes. the staff, meet the chef. Yes, yes. And that way, the people that are considering it really have a comfort level of mm -hmm. what uh, the amazing experience they're mm -hmm. about to partake oh, in. Oh, yes, yes. You have so, to see it to believe it. Really do. It is beautiful. And yes. I congratulations yes. Thank on you I so know much. it's new yes. and it's going to be fun. It and is, you're going to have a is. lot of fantastic yes. people there. And we're short on time, Tiffany. Yes. So we appreciate you coming to Thank join you us so today. Much. So much luck. Thank uh, it's you. a beautiful community. Thank you. If you don't know where Santa Luz is, you should go visit. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up, Google it, right? Yeah, 92127. 92127, <laughs> just north of 92130 <laughs> and east of 92067, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. 92 yes. <laughs> TMI for everybody there. <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for being you. here today. Thank you, Ron and, and stay Patty tuned for, for more Senior Stay or Go TV. So today we are honored to have Scott Tardy, who is the Chief Executive Officer and the Executive Director at the George G. Glenner Alzheimer's Family Centers here in San Diego. There are three locations. I'm just going to read a little sure. bit of uh, statistics because every time I read these statistics it just hits me mid-center in the head. There are over 5 million people afflicted by Alzheimer's or dementia. It's the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Every 66 seconds someone's diagnosed and there are over 60,000 San Diego's over the age of 50 who have either Alzheimer's or dementia. Those are pretty staggering numbers. Yeah, but, yeah, to be honest, those numbers always stagger me as well. I mean, uh, just hearing the numbers, certainly locally here in San Diego, and you know that number, 62,000 or so San Diegans uh, is scheduled. Just over 50. Yes. We're not talking over mm -hmm. 80. Absolutely, yeah. And that number scheduled, from what I understand, to go up to over 90,000 in the next uh, you know, 10 to 15 years or so. So uh, this, is, this is a disease of epidemic proportions. Make no mistake about it. And... Uh, you know, finding resources for family caregivers is, is certainly one of the priorities of, of our organization. And tell us about the Glenner organization. Absolutely, That's yeah. It's a it's great, a great story. story. Yeah. I love the story. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm just, again, honored to be here and tell the story. Um, you know, we really see uh, myself and my team, we see us uh, as really individuals that uh, are focused on, on the legacy of the organization. So we were actually founded in 1982. Uh, by Dr. Glenner and uh, his uh, wife, Joy, uh, who just uh, two in incredible, really visionaries in, in the work that they uh, did throughout uh, their careers. Uh, Dr. Glenner was a researcher uh, and, certain, and a physician as well, and he was recruited from the National Institutes of Health to become one of the first uh, researchers at the University of California, San Diego. And so, um, uh, obviously, a lot happened over a you know, time period, but in his research, he discovered uh, what's known as the beta amyloid proteins, which is really the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. And so, uh, essentially, the way that uh, the Glenner Centers were born was that uh, both Dr. Glenner and Joy stopped a murder-suicide from happening one uh, late evening, and uh, Dr. Glenner said to Joy, it's time to start to take care of the living and uh, really yeah, continued his research, certainly, but I still to this day, you know, hearing that story get goosebumps because uh, they focused, uh, you know, the, the remainders of their careers on uh, taking care of family caregivers and uh, our participants in our centers. Which is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. awesome. So th that's the history of the Glenner, yes. which I read as well and was very, felt that was a very heartwarming story, having lived through my own journey. Yeah. But what is the actual benefit of aff affordable respite? I mean, as a caregiver, sure. it's never easy. Mm -hmm. So to find respite that you're confident you can rely on on a regular basis and not have somebody call in sick or not show up. Absolutely. Or, um, Mention some of the many benefits that you're able to provide families. Absolutely. I think a couple things that really strike me, and, and I've been involved in senior living and uh, nursing uh, home care, if you will, for, for many years. Um, one of the things about respite programming that's so important is uh, not everybody's ready for residential care. 
um, and not everybody is looking for someone to come into their home. We certainly work with some incredible colleagues and, and community partners that provide that service, residential and home care, but some people are just looking for the opportunity to bring their loved one to a safe, nurturing, kind place for the day, um, maybe just one day a week, maybe a couple of half days a week, uh, do that affordably so that they can do some of the things that, uh, quite frankly, are essential to their health. Um, most of our participants are in their uh, early 80s, so oftentimes their family caregivers or their spouses are in that age range as well, so they need to get to the doctor. They are need there to children in their 60s? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, adult <laughs> children as well, certainly. So, I mean, you know, um, th the thing about being a family caregiver, of course, is that life, life goes on, so you have to be able to provide uh, for yourself as well as your loved ones. So I really feel strongly that uh, the day program option provides for that, again, the respite and uh, really creates an affordable option. Um, I, I think when you, when you compare pricing uh, when it comes to residential care, um, we can often be less than half of the price of assisted living from kind of a national average than what you would normally see, uh, again, in, in, in a residential setting. And again, that, that's an, a needed option for many people, Absolutely. and we appreciate that. Um, but I think in the earlier stages, certainly, uh, of Alzheimer's disease and, and other forms of dementia, um, family members are looking for that, that affordable option uh, and not necessarily looking for placement just yet. And where are your communities that you're serving? Where are you housed? Yeah. Yeah, so the, we have three locations here in San Diego County. Uh, one is the original uh, location since 1982 in, in Hillcrest, right on the corner of 4th Avenue in, in Pennsylvania. And then we have uh, one in South Bay and uh, on the property of Frederica Manor. So we're very fortunate to be partnered with Frederica Manor and we have a uh, location right there in one of the cottages on, in Frederica Manor. Oh, okay. And then we have a location inside of uh, Encinitas, uh, uh, excuse me, Silverado Encinitas. And um, again, very fortunate to be partnered with them and have been there for many years as well. So um, we have in an incredible team, uh, very tenured team. We have some staff members that have been with, with us for uh, over 20 years now. Wow. So, um, and that I- That says a lot. Yeah, yeah, I always attribute it to the dedication that these uh, associates have to not only uh, uh, the organization, but really to, to, to the disease, you know, and to, to creating, um, care options for individuals with Alzheimer's. That's, that's, that's what you, you see in, in their passion and what they do, uh, you know, in, in their, uh, their day, daily life. And you mentioned the word affordable, so how, give us an idea of what that means and how sure. you fund it and what it would the cost be to a caregiver. Absolutely, so a couple things on, uh, on, on pricing. Uh, so our private pay rate is $95 a day. Um, we've kept that rate uh, pretty consistent for the last several years now. And our focus is honestly to keep that rate uh, either there or lower. That's been a discussion uh, that we've had a lot in our team is how do we lower our pricing? How do we get additional funding from the community and, our, and donors so that we can really pass those savings on to the, uh, to the family caregivers? And uh, that's a, a very proud uh, point for me because uh, I know that uh, with escalating costs, uh, oftentimes those costs can get passed on to the consumer and uh, I would just as uh, soon like to see us go the other way. Um, we try to provide as many services as possible to uh, our family members uh, for the, the most affordable rate possible. And, I, and again, I know affordability is, is relative, but I think when you compare the services uh, at $95 a day, it's, it, it ends up being uh, pretty competitive uh, for, for an eight-hour day. Uh, we actually partner with the Volunteers of America. They provide uh, our, our nutrition program for us. So, you know, mm -hmm. hot lunches come in, and, and, our fam and our families really appreciate, I think, that partnership that we have with uh, not only another nonprofit, but just, again, trying to keep uh, all those services on, under, under one roof. Um, and then I think other pieces from the standpoint of uh, insurance, uh, we s have a contract with the, uh, the VA, so we uh, serve oh, many, great. many of our, uh, our veterans. So proud to do that and, and continue to, to expand those services. And then in two of our uh, centers, we actually take uh, what's called CBAS, which is Community-Based Adult Service, so which is uh, essentially the California form of Medicaid so, uh, or Medi-Cal. So we have those services as well. And we're also very proud to have two PACE contracts as well. So we have a oh. contract with St. Paul's PACE and San Diego PACE. So um, we've really focused on trying to make sure that our services are as accessible as possible. Um, you know, throughout the county. Good for you. That's, That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. That is awesome. So, 
Do you have, what's a typical day at the Glenda? Do you have different levels of care for people at different stages of the disease process? Yeah, it's a great question. I think a couple things uh, in, in our services is very focused on a structured uh, activity a recreation based day so if you were to look at the schedule you would see things like um, you know music programs starting first thing in the morning uh, even things like looking at current events a lot of uh, physical uh, kind of activity um, so we have a community adult uh, education teachers coming in doing uh, various programs so very focused at the Glenner Centers and our activity professionals on making sure that it's a structured um, activity filled day uh, not just sitting in front of the TV absolutely absolutely and, and one of the reasons why I think is so important on that is, is certainly for the benefit of the participant and engaging them but also to make sure that by the time they come home that quite frankly they're they've, they've spent time and are engaged and are and are ready for bed so that they're not uh, the the effects on sundowning I think sometimes can be uh, you know uh, Pretty intense yes. for a family they caregiver. They are very intense. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sure you've experienced. I mean, you know, not being able to rest in the evening and not having a structured program during the day will will, you know, cause an incredible amount of stress for a family caregiver and and quite frankly for the participant as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we we really focus on making sure that the day is structured and that. Uh, it's consistent with the individual's kind of cognitive functioning as well. So um, I would say that by, by mid to, to sort of late stage Alzheimer's disease, that uh, that's not really our, our, our specialty, uh, meaning as individuals move towards mid to end stage, they may be looking at other um, options uh, as far as more like residential care and things like that. So once an individual's acuity passes a certain point, I think we, we sit down with the families and kind of talk through what the best strategies and care planning would be. But certainly then those early to mid stages, um, I, I definitely feel strongly that uh, the Glenner Centers is, a, is an option you know, for many families. Scott, I want to take the last few minutes that we sure. have today to really talk what I see as just the phenomenal what's going on in Chula Vista, and that's the town square. So sure. Let's talk about that the last few minutes we have together this morning. Absolutely. Um, so, so town square is uh, an opportunity for us to really expand our services, uh, certainly throughout San Diego County and, and hopefully uh, throughout the country. We feel very strongly that this is an international model for, for care. And essentially what it is, is it's a 1950s, 1960s uh, town uh, replicated inside of the building. So um, the thought process behind it, and it actually was inspired by my 12-year-old daughter who went to a, uh, a place called BizTown. Oh, it's familiar. awesome. Yes. Have you been? Yes, it's awesome. absolutely. So I hadn't been before my daughter uh, told me about <laughs> it. She came home raving about it, said, Dad, you've got to see this. So I did. And uh, so I always tell the good folks over at BizTown, and there's some great individuals there. They really were the inspiration for us to uh, start to explore this. So when I saw it, our model's certainly different in, in who we serve and what we're creating, but um, I, I saw the impact they were having on the lives of the children and, and the, the opportunities that the children were having interacting with these storefronts and started to think about this in the, in the realm of Alzheimer's disease. So for us in our design, and uh, we're very excited, we're partnered with another local nonprofit, uh, you may have heard of them, they're the San Diego Opera. So uh, they are helping us to, uh, to design our storefronts and to actually build our storefronts. Mm -hmm. So um, the thought process behind these storefronts is that uh, they will be fully interactive. So there's nothing that's uh, kind of a facade about them. Our participants will be able to go in and interact. You have things like a movie theater, a 50 style diner, a library, a pet store. All of these uh, storefronts are reminiscent of, of an individual's of life and in, in, in the community and so uh, you know I'm a big believer that uh, individuals need to feel uh, no matter where they are in their kind of their lifespan uh, that they're being able to engage in, in community and kind of civic life and so to be able to create this uh, space um, that is you know utilizing reminiscence therapy uh, which you know, research really has shown over the years that it reduces agitation, it improves mood, it improves sleep quality, because you can take people back to where their strongest memories are. Um, and using these storefronts and tangible prompts is, is pretty, uh, pretty powerful. How many square feet under one? About 8,000. All in 8,000 yeah. square feet? Yep, yep. So each one of the uh, storefronts is uh, kind of a different uh, footprint. Some are as big as 1,000 square feet. Some are as small as three or 400 so square feet. So people aren't living there. 
No, this is oh, a day this program. Is a, this is a day, day program. program. That's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is a. Uh, so it's it, not like summer house. It's where they right, live in the right, community. This right. is something they're going to go to oh, as one okay. of your day okay. programs. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So again, we feel very passionate about you know providing affordable services, and this will be of that same kind of genre of our day programs now. So uh, just in a different kind of immersive environment. So how does this compare to what's already been done in Denmark? So as great question. So the one in Denmark is actually is a residential community Correct. and so and they actually have like a fully functioning grocery store and things like that which is phenomenal and I know we've been uh, very graciously compared to, to their program. I think for us what's different is again we're, we're a day program so um, our individuals or uh, family members are dropping their loved ones off and coming to pick them up um, and I think we really do focus on that 1953 to 1961 time period. Nothing about town square. Ozzie and Harry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I have a quick story that I think uh, you, you guys would love. Um, when we, we purchased a 1959 Ford Thunderbird. Oh, and, uh, the yep. small one. Yep, yeah, it's the, 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 square, it's the square bird. Yeah. So, um, and we, we actually purchased it from a very kind and generous nurse who gave it to us at a, at a, a fraction of what it probably would have sold for. Um, but she believed in what we were doing. And when we took uh, the T-Bird off of the, um, uh, of the tow truck, we had a participant uh, see it and looked at the double headlamps and said, that's a 1958 or later. I mean, the, it was an immediate wow. connection. Wow. And so it's, right. it's very powerful, um, you know, and, and we understand that, you know, it's, it's really with Alzheimer's disease and dementia, it's moment to moment. So we're trying to create an experience that's certainly not juvenile. It's uh, very focused on kind of an authentic experience and not only for the participants, but for their families as well, because oftentimes family members can't go to movie theaters, they can't go to a museum, they can't go to you know a diner or a restaurant because the variables uh, sometimes are not controllable for them. So to be able to come to this safe, secure environment and really experience things, uh, I, I, I think is very powerful. And I think it's something that uh, the country is, is very much in need of. There are a lot of day programs and uh, we, we certainly uh, appreciate those, those programs that are out there in existence now. Um, but the challenge is that a lot of them don't focus on Alzheimer's and dementia. And as we started with, the numbers are, are staggering. Are staggering. So this is an opportunity to really, uh, to really take this model and uh, provide it across the country, and, and again bring affordable services to many families in need. When will this be completed? What's the anticipation? First one is March of 2018. First one. So that means you're going. I see where you're going yeah. with this. Yeah. This yeah. is replicatable all over the country. Correct. Correct. So this is a fabulous model. That's and I the wish plan. you much success and uh, good fortune with it. I think it's going to be phenomenally well thank received. You. Thank you so uh, much. So we are out of We're time. Out of time. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much for <laughs> uh, being here today. Yes. And I wish you, wish you great success. And uh, congratulations to all the fabulous work that you're doing at the Glenner Organization. My and uh, we wish you well. So stay tuned for more Senior Stay or Go TV. Please welcome senior advocates and realtors of Greenwald Gerke Real Estate, Ron Greenwald and Patty Gerke. And here they are in the studio on that side. What's going on, y'all? I know. I feel, so, I feel so different <laughs> to be on this side of the fence. Much easier, isn't it? No. Actually, not, <laughs> not at all. No. Because we don't know what you're going to ask. Well, you do <laughs> yeah, to an extent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, and thank you for being here. Thank, thank you for all the things that you guys do in the community. You know, it's, a, it's been a big thing for me since I was in college and, you know, volunteered at a at a nursing home, and you guys don't like that, but that's what we called it. I was volunteering at a nursing home. Skilled nursing home. It was, it was, a, it was a facility where people went to, uh, who really needed a lot of help. But a lot, you know, it was such a, a profound experience for me. It made me realize that, you know, gosh, every one of these people was just like me at one point, and I'm gonna be just like them. The cycle of life, this is how we it hope. works. Yeah, you, you, that's the goal. <laughs> you dodge the exit, you make it there, <laughs> yeah. right? Because that's the alternative. So. It, it really changed things for me. In fact, it impacted my life in a major, major way. But what I realized in being there was that a lot of times people who get to a certain point in their life, they sort of run out of options or they don't know what their options are or whoever's taking care of them doesn't know what their options are. And when I found that you guys were doing this, you were actually walking people through this, explaining to them what options are, 
I was like, wow, that is a truly amazing thing that doesn't really exist anywhere else. And you two are the experts on senior housing options in San Diego. Everybody knows you. I mean, everybody all over San Diego knows you Thank for this. Thank you. And you've had to spend a lot of time to get yourselves into that position. What I wanted to do today was to kind of let's flesh some of those things out. It's coming up more and more in my life. It's coming up more and more in the sh other shows that we're doing that these things are, are, are an issue. What do you do? What happens when X? And, and a lot of times it, it could be that, you know, either mom or dad or grandpa or grandma passes or, you know, gets to a certain point where they need additional help. I mean, where do you start when someone comes to you and says, oh, here's what's happening, you know? Gerkster? That's easier than said than done, actually, <laughs> because first of all, it, what you try to find is you try and find people who are open to options and suggestions. So a lot of times the family members may be open to options and suggestions, but the senior may not be because they're pretty much, I'm going to, you're going to take me out of here in a pine box. Mm. So if that's their mindset and they're not open to anything, it's really, it takes time, a lot of time to get them to that point. And so a lot of times, most times, it takes some kind of incident to really get them to realize that maybe staying at home alone isn't the best option. So they may fall and break their hip, or they may fall and not break anything, but scare themselves enough. Or if they're starting to lose their cognitive abilities, they may go to the grocery store one day and then get in the car and think, hmm, how do I get home now? And so sometimes it takes those kinds of things for the senior to actually recognize it versus the family recognizing it. And if you're the family, I would just say, you know, trust your instincts on this. You know, if you notice something, if something doesn't seem right, if something doesn't feel right, take that as your warning from God. I mean, literally, because that is what it is. That is your opportunity to say, let's get ahead of this thing. Because when a fall takes place, I recently lost my grandpa because of a fall. He fell, he broke his hip. Within two days, he was done. Um, you know, he had the surgery and all that stuff, but it's so traumatic. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Yep. That fall, it can, and, it's, and it's over. And then you, you start second-guessing yourselves. Well, what else could we have done? How could it have been better set up? And you, don't, you can't go back and make those changes. So trust your instincts. When you, when you notice and you, you feel something isn't right, or you know, an incident like that happens where you know, mom or dad, they went to the grocery store, and then the next day they went to the grocery store and bought all the same stuff again. Mm -hmm. And they came home, and you notice there's two of everything. And you go, what's going on? That's a sign. That's a sign right there. So why should people be excited about, because there's a lot of options now, yep. right? But why, so why should seniors, and why should their adult children be excited about what some of those options are? Um, right? I, I think Patty and I have, been, have really surrounded ourselves with an amazing team of people, and that's what I'm excited about is that team is growing every day mm -hmm. in terms of whether from the legal standpoint, the home care standpoint, the senior housing standpoint, all the different people that need to come and support the family and support the senior, they're really starting to get their act, the, that team of people is growing and the professionalism is growing and the awareness is growing to really put the right people in place to really get the message out of what needs to be done on a proactive basis. But what I'm most excited about is the free enterprise world, is the longevity marketplaces that we're calling it. Entrepreneurs are really finding the need that there is this opportunity to really bring Huge product and services that benefit the quality of life of our seniors. And uh, AARP is on board with it, which is a huge plus. There are conferences almost every month that Patty and I could go to if we wanted to on new product and, ser product and services that are coming to marketplace through uh, collaboration of nonprofit and for-profit industries that are going to have a great impact on our seniors' quality of life. That's exciting. So it's, it's, it's changed. It isn't it's changed. It's in the closet anymore. It's kind of interesting, though, because it's like, you know, baby boomers were born 70 years ago was the first baby boomer, right? So it's not like 
we're new to this environment and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, we have this huge influx of baby boomers. It's like, yeah, we've kind of been around a while. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't just appear. <laughs> but now the open marketplace has said, okay, well, that's coming. And at the same time, looking at a lot of people who, who want that additional quality of life. Um, and I think it's amazing because you've put a lot of a lot of seniors now have the ability to sort of control their own destiny, to be able to, to go to one of these amazing places um, that we've featured on the show in the past, Wesley Palms, the list goes on, of you go there and you're like, this is a resort, exactly. essentially. I mean, you, everything and anything you want at your fingertips, you name it, you've got it. If they don't have it, they'll get it for you. That's incredible. So I think for a lot of people, especially people who, who worked really hard, who saved and who, who are, are capable of it, this, it's an amazing just to have those options available and have multiple places, not just one place, not just the one nice place to go to, but options. Well, and I think our society has changed. So when I grew up, my grandmother lived with us. So we were there to take care of her. Families aren't that tight knit anymore. Mm. Um, in some cultures they still are, but overall, even you know, other countries are feeling the fact that the young people have moved on or moved away for employment opportunities or whatever it may be. And so you don't have that, you know, grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, kids, everybody living together, supporting one another, taking care of one another. You know, people have moved all over the world mm -hmm. for employment opportunities or just any kind of choice that they made to live someplace else. And so family is not as tight knit and as close by physically as they used to be. So. I think, you know, the seniors that are proactive and realize that, look, I have children, but that doesn't mean they're going to take care of me. I need to plan for myself. Those are the people that are going to find the options quicker and easier. It's the ones who wait for something to happen that it's harder for them to find the options because they need them like now and you don't know where to look or where to go to find them. And, and so that's why too. what we're trying to do is bring that information to the forefront so that everybody can have that information. I mean, I lived it myself with my own parents and unfortunately a lot of times my mom had vascular dementia. That's a disease process that you can't always be proactive. You kind of have to wait to see what's coming next. And that was my biggest frustration was you're always waiting to see what's coming next and then having to react instead of being able to plan or be proactive. But now for, for a lot of people, they're able to do that, which is amazing. Exactly. Fact, but one, but one thing hasn't changed in life is the, the family dysfunction. <laughs> and that is one thing we, again, we're, you know, we do real estate by day and senior advocates the rest of the time. Uh, and one thing we still find is no matter how proactive you can be, no matter how many products and services are out there, getting the, Everybody on the same, same page, page you know, there's just, a, everybody has come from different uh, perspectives. And that's the toughest one that we see. And we see that every day when we hear the stories of family dysfunction. And that's, that's sad. And that really has a huge impact on what mom and dad will do. Yeah, and it is definitely something that is almost always, it's almost ever present unless you have a child situation. There's almost always some sort of conflict there. But having you guys as advocates in the process is really helpful because you've seen it, you've been there before. Um, you can be involved as much as well needed. and bring in the third party who is not a family member who says okay Here's here's some options and here's what we think is best for you versus One of the family members trying to tell the other family member what they think yeah, is best not when a you bring idea. in that third party It's like okay We could definitely go on for a long time about all the complications that are involved <laughs> in this particular space that you guys are in But I just commend you, well, thank you. on taking the leap being such great advocates for seniors in the community bringing things to light that a lot of people elder abuse several things from your show senior stay or go tv which you can watch right here on this on this channel um and that's just such a big thing and i don't see anyone else doing it so i really commend you guys for that thank you so much for coming in today i really really appreciate thank your you time. thank you us. thanks for having absolutely us. stick around for more smarter san diego tv where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else commercial free